Christ died? 100%. How? Every single, um, apart from the Islamic scholars, every single uh, secular scholar, Jewish scholar, Christian scholar, you name it, all agree, even Bart Ehrman said the most undisputed historical fact in the whole of the um, history is that Christ uh, died at the hands of Pontius Pilate. What's best of what? Um, firstly, firstly, it is not true that everyone agreed. You have many Christians, early Christians within the first 400 years of Christianity. They have documents which says Jesus is sitting on the top of the tree on the branches. He's laughing and say, look, and the man they're killing and crucifying, it's not me. Oh, what, are you talking about like the Gospel of Barnabas or something? No, <laughs> no. What I'm simply answering to your point yeah, that yeah, yeah. every single historians, academics mention this. I am saying yeah. totally afactual, ahistorical. We have Christians themselves within the first 400 years of Christianity. They believed Christ did not get so crucified. Hang on. I am not talking about whether they are true Christians or yeah, false right. Christians. I am only countering your point that everyone believed in it. Everyone didn't believe in it. Oh, you know, brother, brother. No, because they believed in him as their saviour, yeah. so their Christ. Be their saviour if he didn't die? Uh, uh, no, no, because, that's, because that's a belief system that you have incorporated that, oh, our saviour has to die. In the Jewish concept of the Messiah, the Messiah would be the one who would be saved, not killed. So if you... No. Where the Jews are wrong, though, no, 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 Isaiah, he would be die for our transgressions. He'll be wounded for our transgressions. It says in Isaiah 53, he shall see his offspring, his seed. Yeah, because he resurrected. Did Jesus have children? Did Jesus have children? No. Not, uh, so the suffering children, servant, he, had, uh -uh. he has heavenly children. Seed, seed in that passage is and only can be literal. That is one key knockout argument against the Christian concept of the suffering servant being Jesus Christ and so on because every single time the word seed is used, it is literal. So the Jewish people have a knockout argument against the Christian who says that this is referring to Christ because to them the Messiah, if it refers to the Messiah, will prolong his days, not only that, will see his seed. Christ. According to the Christian, we didn't have children. Okay, so what you just said about seed only meaning, what was it only Literal, meaning, meaning it's not metaphorical um, like a, yeah. his son, like you are his son. What That's a metaphorical, not is, literal. Where, how did you come about this? Like, what Every other this? passage. Go back to Old Testament usages of the word seed yeah. and look at the usages and you will see it's I used have, literally have to fact check that. no that, I that's what i'm asking it, so. exactly yeah. what you should be doing yeah, yeah, exactly yeah. so now the concept of the jewish people as i'm saying the messiah is not the one who should be killed but he's the one who should be saved and and so on and so forth so it is not a historical undisputed one thing i agree with them it is a well attested rumor well attested rumor it is not true it's just a rumor do you know why it's a rumor Imagine someone says, someone looks up from there, ah, yeah. oh, look, Prince John, whatever, a country is in, in a, another country in Europe, right? It's a mistaken perception. And they went around Instagram, TikTok, whatever, look, ah, oh, Prince John of this country. Perception has misled them to think you are Prince John. What happened was, even the gospel narrative tells us, the Roman soldiers who came to arrest him, they had to have some informant telling them to them who was Christ. They didn't know. So the one who you think has actually misled and became a traitor, Judas Iscariot, think? we have a gospel of Judas Iscariot. Have you read it? Uh, no, no. Right. You should read it. Let's yeah, leave it. Okay, yeah, but yeah. Judas Iscariot, if he really believed Christ was sent by God, like John 17:3, you said, he would not hand over. He would do something, and that is why. That is why it doesn't make sense that he should hand over Christ to those Roman soldiers. Say, oh, it's him. It doesn't add up. Faith. Imagine now. Okay. Imagine. Imagine. This man in a belief system is God on earth. Forgive me for using these examples. Astaghfirullah. You and I, 
heard him making some claims which we are interpreting it to be his God on earth. If we have faith and conviction of our understanding that he's God on earth, am I going to simply hand over to him to get punished or something? Am I going to say, you know, let's go and crucify him? I should fear my total annihilation from existence if he were to destroy me because he knows everything, right? The only person that does that is you. Do you think this is something that is a reasonable approach if that event happened? Okay, so I will address this point and then I'll go to the other points. Sure, made, sure. Because there were a lot made. So with this one is, forget scripture. I'm not going, my, my uh, what's the word? I'm not going back. My argument or my stance is not held on scripture. Even if Matthew, Mark, Luke and John were not written, I'll still be believing the same thing because of the evidence that it exploded and that people were claiming to have seen the risen Christ. Hundreds. All of this, I'm not going by scripture as my... Scriptures. But we, we, we covered that example argument before. Islam and many other religions has an explosion of this kind of evidence of their belief and about their okay. uh, conviction of faith. Okay. If that was the case, then I'm asking you, we have similar in Islam. The Prophet yeah. وسلم, did all these miracles. He received revelation from the seven heavens. Yes. Accept it. Yes. Play the moon. Okay. Accept it. So would you accept it? Yes. Would you simply accept Quran it? Is miracle. Um, I do have a response to that, but I want to get back to the things we talked about yeah. first. Because so I let's, really do okay, fine. But, but can you address yeah, this yeah. point? Do you expect multitude of people within their capacity to record and transmit this information about the zombies okay okay so with okay. so with um so wait we're talking about the whole zombie thing yes right? repeat it one more time so if now you had graves opening up from yeah. uh, ground splitting and many skeletons on whatever rotten flesh or whatever they started walking and people saying do you think no one would record it apart from, say, this camera, I with no disrespect to you. I haven't read that verse in Matthew yet, so I can't talk about it. Yeah, but I can tell you, this is what exactly it says. It says, Saint, graves of the saints are opened up, and they then appear to multitudes of people. So, yeah, fair enough, that happened. Now, if this happened, why is Matthew the only one mentioning this in no other historian, no other gospel writers, no Jewish writer? This is what we witnessed. And their children will convey that message. This will be a legacy, a story in mass numbers. The fact that no one reports it, it gives us enough reason to say this account is ma in Matthew is fishy. It doesn't sound reasonable because we expect other people to say these things. So when we notice accounts like this in any book, we have to ask ourselves, is he making things up? And, 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 when we examine with this particular concept in our mind and we have, we identify many themes which agrees with our thinking that this writer is actually making things up. He's inventing stories, he's inventing prophecies, he's distorting histories. All this will establish is the author or authors of this book is not to be trustworthy and reliable because they are deceiving us through distortion of reality, history, invention of stories which has no historical factual basis and so on. On Matthew, now let me substantiate my claim. Matthew does that actually. He talks about how there's a prophecy that he shall be called a Nazarene. You can read the whole of the Old Testament for hundreds of years and you will not find a prophecy.